Hello, everybody. This is Brian Nelson, Jr., the administrator of the Leave it to Beaver fan club on Facebook, as well as the new Leave it to Beaver slash Still the Beaver fan page also on Facebook. Today, we're going to be talking to Luke Fafara. Fans may know him better as Tiger Fafara, played Tui Brown on Leave it to Beaver. We'll be talking about his time on Leave it to Beaver as well as other shows that he had worked on. We're also going to be talking about his brother, Stanley Fafara, who played Whitey. I'll leave it to Beaver. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview. Hello? Luke, this is Brian Nelson. How are you? Just fine. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. How are things out there by you today? Uh, very nice. Very nice. We're got, uh, we've got about 80-some-odd uh, degrees and uh, a nice little breeze, so it's, it's going well. Thank you very much for doing this interview. We really appreciate it. I guess we could start with right at the beginning in 1957 when you first auditioned for Leave it to Beaver. Do you remember anything at all about that process? No, I I mean, obviously, I knew all about uh, going in for on calls um, because I had I had done it, you know, since I was three years old. But uh, that one, I, I honestly don't remember. You know, it's been written that it was like, you know, a huge casting call and there were, you know, hundreds of kids and all this that I would have remembered it. I don't remember that at all. I think it was much more standard than that. Uh, And I just, I remember (laughs) when I was a kid, I, I never, I never thought I should ever uh, lose an audition. You know, I, I, (laughs) whenever, you know, whenever I uh, didn't get something, it was just a disaster for me. I, it, it, and I, I went through that that period. Then years later, I have a I have a relative who's a writer director, and he he wrote uh, co wrote and directed uh, a movie called Peacock, which uh, was I think really very good. Um, and he was going on an interview. And uh, his mom called me and said, can you take him? I can't get him there. And, and uh, so I, I took him on this interview and he went in and he, he ended up not getting it. And I can remember he sat down in the car and we're driving home. And I said, Michael, you have to understand something. And he goes, what? He was about, I don't know, probably 11 or 12. And I said, uh, today you were this bright, bright red apple. And you went in there and you just stunned them as a bright red apple. Today they were looking for an orange. Uh, that's, yes. that's how it works. Well, and a lot of times it's not even that you were bad, but it's just something that in, their, in the character that they're trying to cast, that's not what they're seeing in the audition. Yeah, and as a kid, a lot of it is, do you look like the parents that have been cast? Right. You know, there's a lot of that. So, but anyway, so that's the way I was. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm giving him advice on something I was terrible at. <laughs> but As a and, child. Uh, yeah, as a child. And, uh, yeah, so it went... Uh, Obviously, it went well. My my uh, my brother was cast as well. Um, you know, I I heard I I heard from an agent, from uh, my agent that that uh, that my brother and I were actually up for the two key for Wally and the Beaver. Now that would but have been they, interesting. Two brothers but playing the, brothers. Yeah, but they had they they ended up. Uh, not they we ended up off the list because they were afraid uh the two people living in the same household one gets sick the other could get sick it could stop production Ah, i have i have no idea if that's true 
it rem I remind you, it came from an agent. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we were fortunate enough to be a part of it. I'm very, I'm very proud of having uh, been a part of that show, and and I, I know my brother was as well. My brother had some some issues that he went through and was very sad, but he was a he was a great guy, and I know people remember him very fondly as Whitey. Right. And, uh, you know, he just, he just had some demons that, uh, that he had issues with. So anyway, um, I, I, I think, you know, you were asking during, during that time, I, I, I just had such a fondness for being on that set. I, I don't think. I've never had a problem on a set. I've never, I've never worked with anybody who went into a tirade. I've never seen, uh, you know, directors throwing things or whatever. You know what? I've never, I've never experienced that. The difference with, with the, with Leave It to Beaver was that it was, it was even better than other shows because it was like family and everybody got to know one another and everybody looked the 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 two leads just looked after all of the kids um and i uh you know they, they were just they were just very very special and and the director i worked with most mostly was norman tokar and he uh he was excellent he 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 really he really understood the kids. The set, the you know, on a on a any kind of uh, any kind of show, be it you know stage or whatever, uh, and especially if, if it's a uh, well, a lot of I I did a lot of the like the skeleton shows and stuff like that, and they can be a little body, you know, they can right. go off, and it, there was never that on the set. You didn't hear. You, you you never heard anybody get mad or cuss or whatever. At least I never did. So uh, so it really was family. Right, and I actually heard from, I believe it was either Jerry or Tony talking to them that they said that many times, you know, the 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 creators, the producers of the show, were very careful about having a kid friendly setting, and that. If there was any dirty language, that they'd be off the set instantaneously. So, you know, if if you didn't, if you weren't aware of that, then you didn't see any of that. Then they they hit it pretty well, apparently. Yeah, they, I, yeah, it it was a uh, it was definitely uh, a clean set. That's for sure. So in your uh, in your your credits. In Leave It to Beaver, you appear as Tiger Fafaro. Now, was that a was that a childhood nickname, or was that a nickname for for the screen? Was that a, a name out there for a stage name? Oh well, uh, there's uh, there's a story, and uh, I have a uh, <clears throat> I, my sister. Uh, it's all her fault. <laughs> my sister, my sister was a, <clears throat> excuse me, my sister was a dancer. She, uh, back in, back in the day when comedy acts went out, uh, they would have an entire show, including dancers and singers. And then the comedians would come out and do their thing. Well, she toured with Abbott and Costello for a long time on their show, uh, we were both in San Francisco when this happened. She was on, she was on stage. My mom and I were backstage and I was watching her dance. I hadn't done, you know, I was probably, I was around three years old at that time. I hadn't, you know, I just, I just loved to watch her dance and it was more fun in the wings than it was in the, uh, in the audience. So I'm standing there, I'm watching her dance at the end of her dance. She's taking her bows and I ran out of my for my mother's hand, and I ran out on stage, and I took bows with her. And this was a packed audience, and, and it ended up the audience thought it was fantastic. That the the uh, the age there was an agent in the audience who talked to 
uh, the showrunner there about, you know, that was, that's a great act. And he says, it was no act. He just ran on stage. <laughs> so, so then he went up and he talked to uh, my sister. And then my mother is there with, with both of us. And it started a conversation. And from that point on, that gentleman became my agent and he is the one that's that you know my name is luke lucas for whatever he says no he says we need we need to we need a name that will stand out uh you know and the fact that he's you know small he's three years old let's call him how about how about tiger <laughs> and that's how it started so i went so so today you know uh today everybody that, Everybody that is closest to me, uh, family and friends, they know me as Tiger. You know, in my work environment, I'm Luke. So, yeah, the um, yeah, I, I was going to ask if that was you know, if, you know, because nicknames, you know, they stick, and so maybe you know, being that you were known that as a child, I was wondering if maybe you were still referred to as Tiger by close member family and friends. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows me. Now, my, even my, my wife, my wife met me, as, was introduced to me as Luke. She calls me Luke. Everybody else calls me Tiger in the family. So, so I have a split personality now. It's terrible. Well, it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm Brian, but I grew up as BJ. My dad and I, we have the same name. So, yeah. And so, like, when people call me Brian, I know it's my name, but at the same time, it's like, I, I know myself as BJ, so it's, you know, my identity is BJ, but every, you know, every once in a while, you know, in the business world, you know, even, even on the Leave it to Beaver fan club, you know, everyone knows me as Brian. So yeah, it's, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and I, and I think, I think it, it probably, the, the fact that, the fact that I had the two names, I think is, uh, is interesting that I dropped it because I, I think, you know, a grown man uh, called Tiger is, I think, could be a target. <laughs> so <laughs> now, nowadays, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So you had said yeah, that. So yeah, so that's, that's how I got the name. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, that's, I. so it had to do with, with the show business. Your agent got it for you, and then. Today it's now your your childhood nickname to people that you know closely. Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. So Absolutely. yeah, you said that. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, you, no. You said that you know we know that your brother Stanley played Whitey on Leave It to Beaver. Right. Now he had he had his name Stanley. So how did he get into the business? Did he? hook up with your agent as well or did he just tag along on interviews how did how did he get into the business actually that came that came later um uh, he he wasn't in it you know terribly early on um until the i mean he did some he did some shows he did a wagon train he did you know a bunch of different things he was in a he did some uh advertising at one time he 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 won a actually he won a, my sister entered him in a contest the same sister <laughs> entered him in a, in a contest uh for a dennis the menace look-alike and that was going to be my next up, question <laughs> then he ended up he ended up winning it and uh <clears throat> I always thought he would be. I, I always thought he he would have been a good, a good in as uh, Dennis the Menace because he had that, and, and I think it comes across in Leave It to Beaver, especially, especially uh, in the episode. Uh, uh, I, it's, I think it's called In the Cup. No, oh, yeah. I say it's real Sue. Oh, I say it isn't. Then prove it. How can I prove it? Well, you can climb up there and see. Why should I? Why don't you? 
Because I don't have to. I know it's real soup. <laughs> I know it isn't. You don't want to because you're chicken. <laughs> hey! <laughs> In the soup, in the soup. In the soup, it, it, where he challenges uh, Beaver to go up and get in that. And he has that little <laughs> smirk on his face. That, yeah. And I grew up with that, that little face. And uh, I, I just thought I, that was, I think that was a little bit of the real person coming through. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Did he make an appearance on Dennis the Menace? Because there's an episode out there where there, where Dennis, and it's a real early one, Dennis sneaks out of the house. He's supposed to be sitting in the corner, and he pays a little boy to sit in the corner for him, a nickel or two cents or whatever. And then he turns around, and it's not him. And it looks very much like Stanley. You know what? I don't. I honestly don't remember. I, I'd have to go check his IMDb and see. I, I don't recall that. But he, it could have happened, I, but I don't. I really don't recall it. But yeah, it would be. Did Dennis the Menace come before, or after Leave It to Beaver? Because it's, you know, there's there's a a rumor out there that Jerry appeared in uh, I Love Lucy, which he did not. He he did not. But this might be the same situation where he looks so much like. You know, he looks so much like Dennis the Menace. But you have to kind of gauge it to where it was, you know. I mean, you know what? I don't. I don't re- really remember when Dennis the Menace started. I would. I, I can't even guess at it. I'm not. I'm not sure. I. A lot of those shows were were right around the same time. There was a whole right. bunch of shows like that, and um, actually, a lot of the people that that uh, uh, had parts on. Leave it to Beaver played in a lot of other parts. It's very interesting if you go if you go into IMDb and look at television from the say the say nineteen fifty to nineteen sixty five. You will see and and you go across you know pick a bunch of of actors and go across. Everybody's doing the same shows. I mean, for for TV, there was only so many channels. You know? Oh yeah, it's not, <laughs> it's not like yeah, it's not like today. And and uh, everybody, if if I go on um, with like Pamela Baird, who you've you've uh, talked to, right? You know, she she we did a lot of the same shows, not at the same time, but we did a lot of the same shows. Because there were only so many shows, you know? Well, I think uh, Ken Osmond did an interview several, several years ago. And, you know, he was talked about, He, you know, they were talking about appearances that he did on Lassie. And he, his response was, yeah, I think everyone did an episode of Lassie. Yeah. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> so did Stephen. We were talking to Stephen the other day, and, and, and he did a Lassie, too. Yeah, I, I tell you that uh, Tommy Reddick. I, I was such a fan of Tommy Reddick, and uh, when I was graduating from high school, I got a call from him, and he said, "I got an idea," and I said, uh, "What's your idea?" And he says, "Well, now, now, just hear me out, because this sounds odd, but just hear me out." <laughs> and he said, "And I said, okay." And uh, and then he went on. He, he started talking about, you know, I'd like to do a show where we interview, uh, where we interview uh, actors, actresses, uh, business people, whatever. But we do it in their homes and we walk through their homes and we learn about the people and we learn about this and that. 
And I was thinking to myself, you know, at, at the time, I was thinking, wow, I don't know if people want you to do that. Would they care about that? And and uh, it, it never came to, to fruition, but he wanted he wanted a partner to do it with him. He wanted a sidekick in the whole in the thing, and the two of us he thought would be a great mix. And and uh, it, like I say, it never it never came to fruition. But he was really really ahead of his uh, of his time because there was a lot of shows that came on about you know similar kind of stuff being done, and he was talking about it in 1962. So. Yeah. I I actually did I I just looked up on uh, Stanley's IMDb and he did appear in 1960 I think no let me see here yeah 1960 he appeared as boy impersonating Dennis oh I see I learned something and and me being a big Believe It's Beaver fan I I recognize him right away and. Then years later, I heard that that was not him, but it is him. I mean, I mean, you could. Yeah. I mean, if you check it out and you look for the episode, I'm sure you, as your as his brother, would be. Yeah, that's definitely him. You know. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> that's good. That's that's really cool. Yeah, he's. That was that was really cool. See, <laughs> and like you, I mean, you see the back of his head. He's sitting in the corner. So, I mean, he looks just like Dennis the Menace. And then all of a sudden he turns around and even, you know, at a first glance, you would think it was Dennis. But then he What's talks. What's the name of the episode? Um, and, let me see here. Uh, let's see. It's Dennis by Proxy is the name okay. of the episode. According to IMDb. Okay, got it. That's good. That's good. And then when he starts talking, definitely, uh, it's it's definitely him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. That's very cool. So in 1955, you appeared on the Johnny Carson show. And now this is before he was on the Tonight Show. And at that time, it was it was hosted by the host before Jack Parr. So he was, it was, you know, the Johnny Carson show. What do you remember about that? I don't, actually. I don't remember. Um, I, I I don't, where, where, it, is that on my IMDb? Yes, it is. Wow. And IMDb is known to have some inconsistencies and some errors sometimes, but... Yeah, you know, and again, most of you know what most most of the stuff that that I've seen on IMDb is accurate. I they have one mistake. They have pretty much. Uh, pretty much. They have they have me in wagon train, and that was not me. That was my brother. Um, that should be on his IMDb, but uh, I don't remember. I don't remember meeting Johnny Carson. Oh well, yeah. Then, then that must be an error because how could you forget that? Yeah, really, really. I mean, it was you know that was in his infancy. I mean, he was in the business for a while at that point, but you know he wasn't Johnny Carson yet. He wasn't he wasn't on the Tonight Show. You know, the when he hit that's kind of like Jay Leno. Jay Leno was big even before he was on the Tonight Show, but it was like he was known as a famous comedian. But you know, once yeah. he got onto the Tonight Show, then he was like, you know, known everywhere as the Tonight Show host. Yeah, I know. Johnny Carson was uh, was doing game shows early on. Oh, wow. That, do you recall what, what one he did? I don't recall. Uh, I know, but I remember him talking about it once. And I remember uh, on TV, and I, but I can't, I don't remember, I don't remember what the name of the the show was and I don't think it was all that long lived but um yeah there was an interesting thing about him once it, it said that he he took up magic when he was a kid so that he could learn to to have fun meet people and talk to people because he was so shy right and uh and boy did he come out of his I guess in real life he was still rather 
you know, very private type of guy. But he sure came out of uh, being quiet. He was great. Oh, I yeah. Was, I think he was the best. It's, you know, in that type of business, you know, if you're – you're an entertainer like that. It's almost like you're you're acting. You know, you're you're putting on a character, even though you're yourself. But you can kind of just do whatever, and you know, you don't have to worry. You're doing an an act, per se, for an audience. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I've noticed the same thing about him. You know, I've heard the same thing about him as well. And yeah, it's and he's known as the king of comedy. You know, the king of late night is is what it is. And it's a pretty it's a pretty big uh pretty big title. Yeah. My uh my nephew that I was talking about earlier who I told the story about being an apple or an orange, he did a commercial with uh with Jay Leno back in the day and uh again it was one of the things I was asked to to take him and I did and it was uh uh Jay Leno and they were doing a I think it was a. Uh, it was he was advertising Tostito. What uh, what's the name? Doritos. Uh, Doritos. He he. he in was, fact, he was. Do, I rem, I rem, I was going to ask you if it was a Dorito commercial because I remember when Ranch Doritos came out, he did those and yeah, he said, "You can go ahead and eat them. We'll make more." You know that was the tagline. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were doing it, and and uh, my nephew was. Uh, was it was like a school thing but he was uh like a surfer and uh they thought it was going to be a great hit that it ended up not playing that well outside of california so it never got the play that some of the other commercials got but uh you know leno was he was he was very nice he wasn't loud or carrying on all the time he was you know he was just jay leno you know yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I was in a, uh, I was in middle school at the time. I was in sixth or seventh grade, sixth grade. And I was, they were, we were doing a communications class and we were talking about speeches and we had to do like a testimonial. And then they, she said, you know, who does, you know, celebrities do testimonials like Jay Leno. And I'm like, who's Jay Leno? I, I know he does commercials, but he's really a big guy, you know, like, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so now one of Tui Brown's iconic things that are that's known throughout, you know, for, from all the fans is his eyeglasses. That's like his trademark. <laughs> so now did, you, what, did directors give you, like, direction? There's, there's two episodes that I can think of at the top of my head where, like, where uh, you're, the boys are trying to earn money for a uniform and you're, you're trimming bushes. This was your father's idea. The, this head has been here for ten years. Now, do be careful. Well, I know what I'm doing, Mom. <laughs> hi, Dewey. Huh? Oh, hi, Beaver. And you're, like, yes. putting your eyes, like, right on top of the bushes and... And your mom's yeah. like, Tui, be careful, you know. <laughs> and yeah. and then in the other one, you guys are making a clubhouse. Eddie, give me the big hammer. <laughs> uh, Tui, if you choke up on the hammer like that, you can't get much leverage. If I stand back any further, Mr. Cleaver, I can't see the nail. <laughs> And you're you're nailing, you know, you're pounding a nail with the hammer, and the hammer's like right in front of your face. So it was like a director, like, okay, Tiger, I need you to put your face right on top of there, you know. Yeah, I I uh, I remember both of those very well. I think um, first off, the glasses were, you know, just clear glass, but very very thick. Right. And. Uh, and uh, it, it became kind of I, it, I obviously it was part of the character, but um, I think early on they wanted to have a 
almost like an Arnold Stang kind of character, maybe. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, I, I don't know if it, I don't know. I was never told that, but that's how I kind of felt that it would, w- was. And, um, and those early, those early episodes were like that, where I was really, you know, playing over the glasses. Then when, when we moved on, uh, one of my favorite episodes is, uh, uh, the boat builders. Let's pull the bucket out. We can, it's nailed. We pull the bucket out, we'll pull the bottom out. (laughs) Heck, I guess we're going to have to take it back and try and fix it. Yeah. Gee, I sure hate to lug it all the way back without even seeing how it works. Maybe we could pile some rocks in it and see how it floats. Rocks aren't the same as a guy. (laughs) But we don't have a guy small enough. (laughs) Hey, Beef. Cold. So what? Uh, give the shrimp the paddle. Where uh, we're building this kayak, and for uh, you know, and then none of us can fit in it, and we put beaver in it, and then it flips <laughs> over, and it, yeah. So, but that one, it, it was more of a softer. It wasn't, you know, I'm working on the stuff. I don't have my face inside the boat doing it, and it right. was, it was more a, of a normal kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, so I think that was, I think that was part of the idea in the beginning, but it wasn't the, the way it, you know, it, it became later on. So, right. And as time went on, the show did change a bit that, you know, and I don't even know if it was intentional, but when you look at early episodes, you know, you go through six seasons, you watch six seasons, and us fans, we you know, we watch hours of it in a day. You know, when you go through that, and then all of a sudden you go to the end, you're all the way to the end, and then you go to the back, you know, back to the beginning, it's like a whole different show because things are developing in the beginning. You know, like yes. like Tony, he has said, you know, I watched some of those earlier episodes, and it's like, man, oh, man, that acting is just really bad. I always... I'm pretty um, pretty tough on myself. So in the beginning, in the first year, let's say, you know, I was always thinking, I, sh- I could have done a better job than that, or I should have done this, or because the the actors that I that I my mom would take me to see in the movies and whatnot were these really good guys like um, James Dean or Montgomery Clift or Brando or you know those kind of. So, uh, but eventually, I got more comfortable with it and uh it worked out you know yeah and 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 so i think not only the actors were you know developing their characters but the production itself was kind of shaping the show too oh absolutely i mean there's there's so many things that that go into a show uh i was telling somebody the other day who's um uh, if you watch if you watch Kramer in the early episodes yeah. of of that show, it is it's it's a milk toast kind of guy with no personality hardly. He gets he's got some jokes in there, but that's about it. And then you go and you watch you know later, even in the first year, later episodes or or the second year. I mean, he's totally different. He's just this wild, crazy man, and he just grew into the grew into the part. Oh yeah, and for me, you know, like a, you, know, you you watch the beginning of the series. To me, it almost seems like a play, almost. And as as time goes on, it seems like a, a like a deeper show, if you know what I mean. You know, it's 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 it seems very ba- well. You know, like the very first line. Of the very first episode is Judy reher you know re um, Judy's reading off of a poem, and she's you know and she, she's very robotic, and she you know she's reading it probably how a kid would, but it you know it's 
it still seems very simple. And then as time goes on, it just gets more complex and it's, it seems more rich if that makes more, if that makes any sense. I, I, I understand. Yes. Because keep in mind, it's not, I mean, it's not just the actors, it's, it's, it's the whole group of people and it's also the writers that are putting the words in our mouth that you know and and i think it got better and i i I forget who this is not uh not my particular idea but i i I know i have heard it said and i think it may have come from it might have been tony or the writers saying that the the show was never about children. It was about parents uh, raising children. Right. And and I think that was very true. And I think as as the stories came out, and a lot of those stories are a lot of those stories are real. A lot of the stories are are, are have come from parents that are, that were on the set that the writers talked to. A lot of it came from uh, you know the the, the founders of, of you know uh, Joe Conway, Bob Moser, yeah. Conway, Bob Moser, yeah, and uh, and I think with all the kids they had, they had tremendous material. So, <laughs> uh, and I think it, I think it did, it did grow. And uh, again, a favorite of mine is when we did the second, uh, the second uh, new Beaver show. Uh, for well, it was the one for uh, uh, it was a high school reunion. I thought I loved that show. I first off, I loved seeing everybody again. Right, and I, I just I loved the way the characters changed a little. I loved the way in the end, uh, uh, Eddie is a little softer on how he feels about the bad guy in the show. Um, and I just, I, I had, I just had so much fun. I, I think it was probably one of the most, uh, most fun I've ever had on a set because it was just, it was like reunion time. And, uh, you know, it truly was a reunion for us. And I, I, I just loved that show. And I got, I'll tell you a little secret is why his, the, the, uh, Tony's wife in the show when when we're at the dance and and they're they're dancing and I'm running around them as they're dancing yelling at them <laughs> yeah okay so so every time every time her back was to the camera she was sticking her tongue out at me to try to get me to laugh <laughs> Janice <laughs> huh Janice Kent was yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was so, and she was a sweetheart. It was. I just, uh, I really enjoyed that show. It's, yeah, it was it's gonna, still a, it's still a favorite. Though. Oh, I I loved it as a kid, and I you know that was gonna be one of my questions. You appeared in the, the reunion movie, which was a couple years before, or maybe even. Well, you had two appearance appearances is, in, the new show in the series. One yeah. was one was in the earlier one. It was when they were, you know, Wally was gonna. He had to sell his car and, and or, no, which one was it? No, it, it was, was one. The plumber was coming in or something. Is that one? That or was Eddie? the that was the mo- that was the the movie was when you you were helping Eddie. Eddie was a contractor. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and then you, yeah, and then the. The two that you appeared in with the new series, there was one where you were at a – Kip was having some problems. Oh, I know what it was. Um, <clears throat> Beaver was away, and Oliver and June weren't talking because Oliver – June's accusing Oliver of lying. So Kip has to go and over next door to Wally's house to say, hey, Uncle Wally, we, we, we have a problem here. We we got to get these two talking because you know they're not talking. And Wally, there's a an, a meeting at his house 
about the reunion. So there's no reunion yet, but you're having oh, yeah. you're having a meeting about the re- reunion. So right. there's that one, and then you have the episode where yesterday's gone. That was the one that we were talking about where you were at the reunion, and yeah, Eddie Eddie shows his, his soft side, and and uh, so what was it like? How did they? How did they contact you to be in the movie? Um, I got, I'm trying to remember. I, um, I got, it was somebody, it was somebody in, um, uh, I guess I think it had to be casting called or whatever. And so, because at the time, at that particular time, I didn't, I wasn't I wasn't working on a regular basis, so I didn't have have an agent. And uh, they called, and then you know I I said sure, I'd love to do it. And then they they were very gracious. They sent um, I, I agreed to it. They they had a, a carrier you know drop off a script, and then uh, a few days before we had. Uh, just a bunch of roses sent to the house and a lovely note from uh, the production people and so it was it, that's that's how I learned about it. it was a phone call and then everything started so did they ask you to be a regular on the series and you weren't available or how did that work no you know I I know that uh I, I think what I think what happened is I think the I think the strongest characters came through. I think you know because when I have a I have a picture. It's an early uh, it's an early still of uh, being in the garage. It's Tony, Jerry, myself, and Buddy Joe Hooker. Who uh, Buddy are you Hart? Familiar with? Yeah, Buddy Hart. Uh, and uh, and so the four of us are there, and we're, I don't know, I think we're playing with marbles or something like that. And uh, that was that was the original group. That was, it was the four of us. And then later, uh, Eddie came in, who we went to the same, we were in the same uh, high school. I went to the same high school at the same time. And so did uh, Buddy Hart, who's also Buddy Joe Hooker. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, we, this, all three of us went to the same high school. But I think, I think what happened, I think Lumpy was a truly defined character. I mean, uh, his size and his attitude and, and of course, Eddie, Eddie, you know, I think knocked it out of the park. He did great. I don't think in the early days, on the original series, they didn't need that many people that, that they didn't need that many friends. Right. You know? And so, and so I think it, towards the, the end of the third season, I was kind of, you know, lost in the group. I, I really, I really hated not to have continued. I would have loved it because, uh, I always felt so comfortable there. But if I had done that, then I would not have been, I would not have been done the other stuff that I did. And I did, a uh, I did a TV movie with, um, uh, uh, Betty Davis. I did, I did my, was my favorite actor. I, I, I did, a uh, a, a, a part with him in his, uh, TV movie. Um, and I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of the name of of the role itself. But okay. Anyway, so there was a lot of lot of other shows that I was able to do because I I wasn't tied to that. Um, but I did miss it, and and I was very gracious when they, you know, whenever they wanted me to do something, whatever part it was, I would I would do it. I had, I mean, I had some things I. I, I was a uh, uh, formed a uh, a company and uh, we were very active in the company. We'd taken the company public, and so I had, I had plenty of stuff to do. But I never turned down 
being doing something with Leave It to Beaver because it's uh, it's really a, a a big part of my career, and I just I loved all the people there. You know, and it's funny too because, like you said, you were only in up to the third season. Yeah, which you know, and you're one of the more memorable characters, actually, and. You know, when people think Leave it to Beaver, you know, they they have a, a, you know, a bunch of people in mind that they remember in the circle. Now, this is the same thing with Pamela Baird. Now, she she's iconic and known as Mary Ellen Rogers, but she was only in a handful of episodes. And yes. she's and she's she's known for Leave it to Beaver. You know, even even people that. You know, we're, we're the super fans of the show, obviously. But, you know, I mean, my friend Flicka, which you also appeared in, um, you know, she was a staple in that show. And, you know, when, when people hear Pamela Baird, automatically think, leave it to Beaver. Yeah. And she and yeah. she also made a an appearance in that reunion show. Did, were you able to chat with her then? No, because... Uh, I didn't, well, I didn't see her. We shot on different days. Yeah. So I never, I never saw her on the set. I didn't even know, well, I guess I, I, I guess I knew the character was going to be there, but I didn't know that she was playing the character. You know, I didn't know they brought her back for it. I thought maybe they'd just have somebody else, you know, look like or something. But, uh, now I never, I never saw her in the, and uh, until I actually watched the show. Right, <laughs> I saw her, and uh, yeah. So yeah, and she's really she's a sweetheart. She's very she very. Nice. She and I, and she, you know, talking to her, she sounds very much like Mary Ellen. Very, very bubbly, very sweet, and and just you enjoy talking to her. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, we have a history together because when I did the the movie with uh, Betty Davis, it's called Stranded. Uh, there were three kids in it, and I was one of them. She was one of them, and then there was a third younger uh, child in it. So, yeah. So, and and actually, I'm gonna I'll I'll see her at the uh, she's coming to the thing in uh in tennessee yes uh, i actually November. yes i actually uh was able to get that information to the representative so that yeah she could be notified about that and that's yeah. going to be huge can, can you talk a little bit about that well i you know what i i i've never done I, i've never done anything like this i um i, I just i never you know, I, I never, I, I've done in my life, in my business life, I've done so many conventions and stuff like that, 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 that I, you know, it's just not something that I think I would do. But when this came up, again, it's all about getting together with everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, I jumped right in. And um, so it, it came to me, I got a phone call. Uh, I got a phone call. And uh, let's say this was a number of uh, about two, three months ago, I guess. I got the phone call on it and uh, I agreed to it. And, you know, I just I just look forward to it. I, I think it's going to be I think it would be a lot of fun. It's going to be part of the Comic Con. Um, yes. Yes. And. You know, I, I, I'm sure I'm going to see a lot of people there that I haven't seen in a long time, so that'll be great. And what was funny is I had, I was trying to get in touch with Tony when I heard he was in the hospital. And um, in attempting to do that, I was calling some people because the phone numbers that I had for both Tony and for uh, Jerry were disconnected. So I called some, some people to... Uh, to try and find him or try and get his number and I didn't and then one day he calls me and he says uh, uh, I got your your number I just 
thought I'd give you a call. I know you wanted to talk. And then, and then he told me about what he'd been going through and stuff. Anyway, I'm glad he's well. Yes. Yes. Me too. And Jerry Weil, I hear is going to be there and Stephen Talbot, he's going to be there and you will be there. And Jerry and Tony, I believe are going to be there. And those are the, those are the names that I know right now, but yeah, that's going to be really cool, and I'm, I'm going to do what I can to get to get down there because that's going to be neat. That would be great. That would be great. You know what? I, I uh, one of the shows I was talking about, the Betty Davis, but the other one was with my favorite actor was Jack Lemmon, and uh, and I uh, the, that was one of the. One of the benefits of not doing the show was meeting all of those people. But, um, you know, it, it's part of the, it, it, it's just always been part of the business. You know, you um, a character catches on, a character doesn't catch on, or, um, you know, something something happens, whatever. I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm just grateful that I was a part of it, of Leave it to Beaver. And then I'm very grateful that, that I was uh, continuing to work because I had no, I never had a problem with being typecast in that. Maybe it was the classes, but <laughs> uh, yeah, which may may have been a good thing for me. So, but, but you I, know, oh, go ahead, go ahead and say, no, no, yeah, you go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, you, you talk about the glasses. You talk about, you know, in the early days, they. They put they were fake glasses. They put thick glass in them. They they probably weren't very easy to see through at all. <laughs> well, let's put it this way: when the camera was off, I wasn't wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you wear glasses as a child at that point? No, uh, uh-uh. never, never. At, at that point, I didn't. I, I wear glasses now, but I didn't at that point. At that time. So when you did the movie, of course, Tui Brown had to wear glasses. Were those real glasses? No. Oh no! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait. In when the nineteen, 19- the movie, yeah, the movie. No, they were, they were, yeah, they were glasses, but they weren't the originals. They, yeah, they just changed the glasses. Right. The, yeah. In the movie, yeah, they weren't the original ones, but they, yeah, they were made to look like that. The round ones, like they, you know, like they were in the, in the show. And then, and then in the series, they were more normalized '80s looking glasses. Were you wearing yeah. glasses at that point? Um, yes, actually, I was. So you didn't, you didn't, you didn't start wearing glasses probably, you know, around that time. It, probably around that episode where you're wearing them while you're planning the uh, high school reunion. Yeah. Yeah, I was probably wearing them at the, about that time. Yeah. Um, actually, I started I started wearing glasses. I, I didn't have to wear them, but I started wearing glasses fairly early uh, because I was I was working in an industry where uh, people people that I uh, was in touch with uh, had probably worked in the business. Uh, as long as I was old, so <laughs> I, I tried to have a little bit older of a look, and uh, and I started wearing glasses, and then eventually I needed them. So, yeah, I didn't need mine until later. You know, in, in later in my adult years, my early thirties is probably when I started wearing them, and yeah, they're kind of annoyance because I remember I remember a time where I could read in bed or watch TV in bed and. Not worry about my glasses if I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so is there an actor that stands out to you that you were in awe working with? Always Jack Lemon. Always Jack Lemon. Jack Lemon. I, I just, um, I don't. I, he, he just. He, he, I, I admire him for his ability to play drama, 
and to and to you know be the funny guy um i'll tell you how much i like him i uh i used to live in laguna beach all right and laguna beach has a playhouse and uh i was looking at some stuff to see what what plays they were going to have i love plays and uh and I, I saw that his son, Jack Lemon's son, was going to be doing a one-man show at Laguna Beach. It was like maybe a week he was, he was on. So I, I, I told my wife, I said, we, got it. We, have to, we have to go see this. And yeah, so she said, course. okay. So we go down there, and I, I, I brought with me... Um, I brought with me a picture of, I had two stills from the show that we did. And I had, uh, I always had a habit of work when I was working with people, I always had a habit of getting their autograph. Um, oddly enough, I never got one autograph on Leave it to Beaver ever. That's how much family it was. Right, it was right. Like, I'm going to be there anyway, you know. Anyway. I'm so, trying to think, I'm trying to think, because there was quite a few iconic actors on Leave it to Beaver. I mean, he, even at that point, you know, you know, I mean, sometimes actors are on shows and they're, they're not at their, you know, they're not at their height yet, but there were quite a few that were, you know, um, Madge Blake, uh, she had quite the career, even though she her career started later in life. Um, and Lyle Talbot, Steve's Steve's father, was on yes. a couple of episodes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I so I so anyway. So we go to the play, and I have a a, a friend who uh, worked uh, the front of the theater, and I said, uh, do me a favor. And just uh, send this backstage, and uh, and I, I had written a I had written a note, and I had a picture in there and stuff. And he took it backstage, and then he came he came to our seats before the show. He came out to the seats, and he says, "Stay here when everybody leaves," and. Uh, Stay here and I'll come get you. I'm going to take you back. He wants to meet you guys. So that's what happened after the show. We went back. He How had cool probably, is that? Yeah, yeah, he had probably 30, maybe 20, 30 people there. Um, you know, he had school friends that were there, whatever, and everybody who we went around, everybody said their thing. And then he introduced me and he started talking. He said, no, I'm not going to tell you. He's going to tell you. And, and so, so I started talking and I said, uh, I said, you know, one of the things in the business that everybody says is that uh, the worst thing to work with is kids or animals because kids and animals can steal a scene from you. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I, I tell you that because I'm going to tell you what his dad said to me before the camera rolled. And this tells you the kind of guy he is. I said, prior to the scene we had run through, the, we had done the run throughs and then it was, it was time. And he said, he looked at me and he says, this is your scene kid. This is all of your scene. Cool. And how oh, cool it was. And I just went nuts. And, 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 and I'm, the, the scene is I'm chewing, I'm basically uh, chewing him out about mistakes he's made or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and so there was that. And, and then, you know, everybody there just, you know, they just realized that, that every, everybody was saying nice things, but this for for anybody in the business would know that's that's a big deal, and uh, and the other thing that he did, and I never knew this. I, I you were talking about Johnny Carson earlier. I never I never knew what it was before we shot. He was mumbling something to himself. 
literally bumbling something to himself. <laughs> and and now it's like 20 years later, and I'm watching a Johnny Carson show, and he's on it, and Johnny Carson says, now, is this true that there's a thing you do before you? And he says, oh, yeah. He says, I, I just repeat uh, uh, magic time, magic time, magic time before the scene starts. So <laughs> it took me 20, 20 years to find out what he was mumbling. But, and then he signed my autograph. He just he, he signed an autograph for me. And, it, you know, some people, they, they don't have a lot of time. They just scribbled their name. He, he, he wrote a little book, and it was, it was wonderful. I mean, he, you know, it is so complimentary. And when you get something complimentary from one of, the, one of your favorite guys, you know, one of your favorite people in the world, it, it was very, very special. And, the, and that was the one time? It was only one time that I worked with him. Oh, wow. And it, it was just before he did Some Like It Hot. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, I mean, he was big on television, but he became right. huge after that. Yeah, it's funny. You know, and talk about Johnny Carson, you know, there's a channel out there that plays the old Johnny Carson Tonight Show, and, you know, you talk about actors that make it big. It's interesting to watch those shows and their guests before they're big. And it's just so cool because it's like a time machine, you know, and you, yeah, like, you know, it's just, especially the older ones. I mean, the older ones, they are the better one, you know, like the seventies, you, you got Sammy Davis Jr. I mean, all these, all these iconic people and it, you know, and at that point they're all they're already iconic, many of them. And it's just really cool to, to watch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, and I, I, I think that that a lot of the era that I uh, grew up in and and worked in, I think was a was just a wonderful wonderful era. I mean, I I I love the westerns. I mean, even even although uh, we were shooting, a, uh, I did a couple of the My Friend Flickers. We were shooting a scene. Uh, where we're both walking with their with our horses, and uh, behind us, and the camera the camera was panning it was a little bit of a distance, and the camera was panning us. So we had to stay we had to stay in the lens, uh, and uh, the two of us had to stay in the lens, and we're we're walking the horses, and. And if I mean, which is, I know it sounds silly, but it's a it's a very difficult thing to do because you've got you've got this horse that that may not want to do what you want it to do. I mean, they're very tame, they're very nice, but you you just have to, you know, you just have to try and work it out. So so we got through. We had two two times we did it. It didn't work, and the third time we got it right. And then that, and at, at the end of it, when it was over, the horse bit me on the shoulder. <laughs> so. Well, you got, you got by, a, you got bit by a horse, and Steve got bit by a dog. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, that show business, you know how it can be. That, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Oh and yeah. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that you know the, between the the westerns and the you know I, I, I just I I enjoyed it I enjoyed it all and I think that uh, um, I I just I think it's it's just so different it's so different now I mean there's so many so many channels there's so many things to watch there's um, you know, that, I mean, the quality of stuff is, is very good. I, um, somebody asked me once and said, well, how, how difficult was it when you were going to school throughout all of this? And I said, you know, the only, the only hard thing on me was the fact that 
when uh, butch haircuts were in, I was shooting westerns, so my hair was long. Right. And then I got done shooting westerns, and 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 uh, you know I go to you know shorter haircuts, and you know now now everybody else's hair is long. You know, it was like <laughs> <laughs> I never had the right do. <laughs> It always seemed that that Tui, you know, it, everyone's hair stayed the same pretty much. I mean, it, I mean, Wally's, you know, at some point got darker, and but you know, as the show went on, I mean, he the hairstyle changed a little bit, but like with Tui, it was pretty much pretty much the same. You know, it was a, a comb over deal, longer hair, you know, some bangs, and that pretty much stayed the same. Were you working in? westerns at that time so you had to do that yeah i was i was still doing i was still doing uh westerns yeah i like westerns yeah they but. said they said on um you know the producers of uh back to the future they said you know after they did the first two you know where where can you go after that and he said well you have to go to the old west you know you got this is the <laughs> 1980s and now we can do a western again you know, so he was able to do that. <laughs> That's good. So after acting, what, what did you do? Well, when did you leave acting, and then where did you go from there? Well, uh, I had... Uh, I was in college. I dropped a, a class... Um, and got immediately drafted. I did two years overseas. Well, not two years over. I did a year overseas, two years in the army. This is back when they had the draft. Um, I ended up in. Um, I was in communications. Uh, I ended up in, uh, and originally I had signed up for. Um, uh, to jump out of planes and then I hurt my hand Ouch. Uh, I, I hurt my hand uh, climbing a, a pole and uh, I was in the hospital for a while I missed I missed my group and so I didn't do that it's probably saved my life but um, and then I was in Saigon for a bit and then from Saigon to most of my time was in Thailand. Um, I, uh, up, up country, it's a place called Karat. It was, uh, around us was Cambodia and above us was Laos. And a little bit further below was Vietnam. So right. it, was, it wasn't a friendly place. No. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I, I think I I missed um, I, think I maybe missed some stuff by by being drafted. I certainly I I had a a scholarship to um, USC, which was uh, a, a, a partly responsible by from acting that I got it, and uh, I lost that because of it. And then people said, "Well, you know, you should." you know, really be upset all over that and whatever. And I tell people the two years that I spent in the military overseas, most of it or half of it overseas was the most defining time of my life. I think, um, to see, you know, it, it's not like I was untraveled. I had traveled across the United States when I was younger but I'd never been outside the United States. And to see places uh, like, you know, Karat, Thailand, like like even Saigon, it was, you know, it, it, especially when you saw children, it was like, you know, you want to take, you know, you want to take all these children and bring them all home, you know? Right, right. Uh, it's it's one of those you know there but for the grace of God go I, and I, I, I it just had it just had even as I talk about it I mean it, it just had a tremendous effect on me and 
a tremendous love for uh, where I am and and what you know what I've had and and how my life has been and you know I'm I'm 77 and my wife tells me I like yeah, I'm a 13 year old at heart <laughs> and and I, I just um, I just appreciate things so much more I have a I have a uh, a son who's a who's a rocker uh, and he's traveled he's traveled the country and I know he feels very similar about about loving you know, loving this country and, you know, audience and fans and all this stuff. And, uh, I have a, a son that just retired at 42 from, uh, the Navy as a senior chief. Uh, I have a, another son that has been in the military, uh, done two, uh, two army, uh, runs in Afghanistan. Um, so, and my dad, my dad was an MP. And somehow, I ended up in a military family. I don't know how that happened. But well, I certainly anyway. do appreciate all of your service. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. But uh, yeah, and uh, so I think. Uh, I think what's going on now in the world is terrible, and I don't want to get on that. So no, anyway, no, 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 we won't go there. We won't go there. So I, <laughs> one, one more question. You know, we, we, sure. you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, you, you had said that you know your brother Stanley. He had some struggles later in life. Did he? Yeah. Was he approached for the new series? Them not knowing, obviously his situation at that time? Um, yeah. I, he went to, um, I, I, I don't recall exactly how this happened, but he wanted to be considered. And I said, well, I'll, I'll make, I'll make some calls. And, uh, he got a sit down interview I think it was on, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, on the universal lot and he had lunch and I don't, not sure who he had lunch with, but he met them and talked to them and everything. And at that time he was, uh, certainly when he was doing the interview and stuff, he was clean and, and sober and, uh, but they, they just, they just decided not to, uh, not to have him. So, mm. yeah. And I, I know he was, I know he was very disappointed about that. Right. But I, I get, I get both sides because you, you know, there's a lot of, there are productions that have been stopped because, you know, people had issues and, right. uh, and it's, it's costly and nobody wants to go through it. And, um, so he ended up, he ended up in Oregon. He he was uh, teaching classes on. Uh, he was very uh, high tech minded. He knew uh, a lot of this stuff. He was uh, helping people, you know, develop websites and all this kind of stuff. And uh, he had been clean and sober uh, for the last, I think it was for five years before he had. Uh, he needed to have a surgery, and there were complications. Um, I think they thought because of his past experiences, uh, there were complications, right. and he passed. Away. Yeah, yeah, unfortunate. And that was on his fifty-third birthday, if I if I read correctly, or was uh, it? The- it was close. I don't know if it was. You know what? I don't remember exactly. I I know if it wasn't the date, it was close to the date. Actually, I now that I think of it, 
I saw the other day there was a there was a picture of his marker and it's a day before. Yeah. But IMDB is wrong and it's the day of on IMDB. So uh, Yeah. But yeah, the, the fans certainly did appreciate his character very much and you know, now that I think about it too, he had a and I did I hear that he naturally had a nervous voice like one of the lines in one episode was like isn't that the one that always sounds like he's afraid that he's talking to a parent or something like that i know i don't you know i never knew him to to have a stutter or a slow way if anything he was very pronounced and you know yeah and and very verbal so (laughs) I don't, uh, I, I certainly don't remember that. No, oh, okay. Well, you knew him best, so. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and we, you know, the fans certainly do appreciate what he gave us very much. Oh, absolutely. You know what, when, 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 I, you know, I have, I have certain friends that will always pimp me out to people. <laughs> they will say, you know, you know who he is? You know what he did? <laughs> and, uh, and and I got used to it. But uh, I would say, you know, I played the part of Tui. And, and so, oh, and I said, and my brother played the part of Whitey. And it was always, your brother was Whitey? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I love the, 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 the action between the two of them. Again, especially uh, in the one that we mentioned earlier. He, uh, I just think they had a, I I, I don't know, they just mixed well, you know. Yeah, they certainly did know how to mesh everybody. There was, you know, and you're feeling on the set, and that's a lot of, you know, of how the show develops. You know, like we were saying earlier, you know, a show, when you watch the very first episode, to me, it sound, it looks like a play. And then as time goes on, it gets much richer. And that has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope, you, right. I hope well, to, is... I hope, yeah, I hope to see you in Tennessee. I'm going to do my best to get there, absolutely. And actually, there's going to be some, some more, some more names, hopefully, coming Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, look forward to talking to you anytime. All right. Hope to see you in Tennessee. I hope so. All right. Take care, Luke. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. That was great. My thanks to Luke Fafara for joining me today. I want to remind everybody that Luke will be appearing at the Gallatin Comic Con in Gallatin, Tennessee for a huge Leave It the Beaver reunion, along with Tony Dow, Jerry Mathers, Stephen Talbot, Pamela Baird, just to name a couple. Stay tuned at the Leave It the Beaver fan club for more information. So long, everybody. Thank you for listening, and we will see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Hey, everybody. I'm... Hope you enjoyed the last part of the interview. Uh, We got a little bit extra for you. Luke called me a few days after we completed the interview, and he wanted to tell me that he wanted the fans to know that there was a lot more to his brother Stanley than his role on Leave it to Beaver as Whitey Whitney, Beaver's friend. Not only was he an actor, but he was, he had, he had other interests as well. He, he was a musician uh, professionally. He played in a band. Uh, he played clarinet professionally as well as other instruments. And he was an artist. Um, th- so there's a lot that the fans of Leave it to Beaver do not know about the actor who played Whitey Whitney on the show. So please continue to listen and hear my conversation with Luke and hear a little bit more about his brother Stanley. I think you'll enjoy it. I know I did. Thanks again.
Yes, how's it going? Hi, this is Luke. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Uh, you got a minute? Sure do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, I, I just, it, it occurred to me after we got done that I had, you know, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's not like I'm preaching the Bible here, but I, there were things left out that I would really like to have you include, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, All right. You having, having a good day? Great day. Great day. I just got back from lunch, and now I'm home, and... Yes, it's a wonderful day. A little chilly here. We're in, in the twenties, but uh, wow! But it, but the sun is out. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yes. All right. Well, let me uh, let me go into it. it just it, it occurred to me that there were a few areas that I wanted to elaborate on, and the first is regarding my brother Stanley. You had asked me, you know, if he really enjoyed it or. Uh, being in the in front of the camera or whatever, and I don't know if we ever finished that, but I just thought I'd let you know. I I think that he enjoyed being front in front of the camera, but his true love was elsewhere, and a lot of people don't know this, but he was a very skilled artist. He could draw. He did. Uh, oils that was his painting in oil is was most of his uh probably his most famous oh cool and our uh, favorites and uh and his other love was music and i know people don't know this he 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 could play professionally the clarinet the saxophone and the drums and he oh, wow. was an incredible drummer um, I don't know if you're old enough to remember, uh, what was the name of the band, uh, Drive, uh, no, anyway, I can't think of that, anyway, but he had, he had a lot of friends that were musicians, and, and you know, like, like a, a lot of young kids, he was, um, you know, he had his own band for a while, and, uh, but he was in an incredible drummer. My, my mother told me that, I didn't know when I was growing up, my mother told me that the teacher that was teaching him uh, was a very f famous teacher that also worked with Gene Krupa, which was like one of the all-time greatest drummers in the world. So, yeah. Uh, and, and I think, sometimes I think that maybe, you know, that might... It, the music might have influenced other things that he got involved with, but uh, towards later in his life, he he was he mentioned to me once, and I don't I, I should have quizzed him on it, but he just said to me, he says sometimes I just want to slow down everything, and I think maybe all of that all of that talent that he had, I think somehow got to him at some point right but i just wanted i wanted people to know that that uh that he was more than just um uh, just whitey you know right right so your son you know he's a musician did yeah. did that did that did your brother influence that somehow i no but well uh no, because they were, uh, there was a, you know, big difference in age, and, uh, but he, he, he went to, he went to Brad, it was named, my son's name is Brad, but he goes by Des. Uh, he, he went to, uh, he went to some of his shows, uh, sometimes he would see him when he was in, uh, the town, wherever town he was in, uh, so, yeah, yeah, they, I, I think they had, they really had a nice bond, I think. And nice. Yeah, they appreciated one another, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was, because we, we, we stopped it when I came home from overseas, but uh, when I came home from overseas, I, I went and to speak to an agent that I had had years before. And he was very gracious and he said, you know, cause I was thinking about going into 
back into the business now as, you know, as an adult. And because um, the last things I did was in my uh, mid to late teens. <clears throat> but any, anyway, he said to me, he says, you know what? He says, I think it's a great idea. I can reintroduce you as an adult. Uh, you could walk into Columbia Studios right now, uh, which which had a very highly acclaimed uh, acting studio. And oh, I could yeah. get you in there and, you know, and I said, oh, I don't want to do that. And he said, why not? He says, you know, people give their right arm to be able to get in there and you could just walk in. And I, I told him, this was a little arrogant of me, I'm sure, but I, I, I told him, I said, I, I don't want to take acting classes. I, you know, I, I thanked him, but I said, I, I've been learning from some of the best people since, since I was three years old. Right. And, uh, and so anyway, so I thought about it for a while and, uh, and then I, this goes to the end of the story. <laughs> then right. my, my sister told me, uh, to call a, a VP at a company that she had worked for. Um, uh, and, and it's somebody that I had met when I was on leave before I went overseas, I had met him and his wife and stuff at a, at a get together that my sister was having. And when I came home, uh, she said for me to, uh, give him a call because he wanted to talk to me when I came home from overseas. So I went in and I, I saw him. Um, he offered me a job. Um, and I stayed with the company for 13 years. The company ended up becoming the, the U S distributor for Panasonic for all of the Western U S and uh i left that company um along with the president of the company and we formed our own uh, company that we took public years later so my sister my sister ended up being the catalyst of my business career and i've thought about this all my life and and it wasn't just my sister, I think, I think that, I think that for the longest time, I, I, I finally come to the conclusion that as, as strong as my father was in my life and how I loved him to death, uh, the conclusion is that women ended up being the greatest influence in my life, and I'll tell you why. Number one, my mother, you know, we all have a mother. It all yeah. starts there, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so if it's, you know, obviously an influencer, and then I, I was, I got married just before I went overseas, um, and before I came home, I had gotten a dear John, but so that wasn't exactly positive. But the positive thing was that my son Bradley was was born during that time while I was overseas and and I have him in my life which is I'm very grateful for and then later at this company that my sister told me to go to work for I met a woman there by the name of Bonnie she had two children I married her two children uh, the two children I adopted a year later and we were married for 32 years and then one day she didn't wake up she had a heart condition but it was nowhere as near as bad as it ended up being and uh, she passed away oh, no. and, then, and then my I, I thought my life was over you know I've already won the lottery I've been married to this woman for 32 years and about 15 months later, without even, I, I didn't do any dating, I didn't do anything after Bonnie died. And I was introduced by, uh, by a good friend to meet Robin. And Robin had three children, Brian, Sean, and 
uh, and Brianna, and they came into my life, and we've been together for almost 22 years. So all the way from my two sisters that I had when I was a kid to uh, to what she remembering to introduce me to this person, all of these things, it just, it happened because because of women in my life. Yeah, that's, that's really something, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's quite the story, actually. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't run around telling this story, but if you're going to write something uh, about Tui, then I'd like it to be about the person, too, you know? Oh, absolutely, and definitely, you know, thank you very much for, for sharing that. That's, you know, it's it's something that not everybody knows, and it's it's very personal. Yeah, it is personal, so, but I'm certain you will do it proud. Oh, yeah, yeah, we will uh, we'll do our best, that's for sure. Okay, and I do have, uh, I have to make a copy of the picture that I want to send to you. Okay. Uh, because the, the copies that have been made were too, a little too dark, I think. Okay. So uh, it may take me a few days, but I'll get it off to you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You bet. You bet. All right. Always good talking to you. It's good talking to you too, Luke. I appreciate it. And again, hopefully I'll, uh, I'm making plans to get down there in Nashville. So hopefully we'll see you there. That would be cool. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. All right. Take care, man. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Wow. That was something. Thank you so much, Luke, for sharing that with us. That, you know, that was very unexpected. And and, uh, thank you so much for sharing something that was, you know, like, you know, like we said, very very personal and you know um you know it it says a lot like you said you know women were uh, quite influential in your life um <clears throat> i don't know if you, you know i hope you don't mind i you know you i i give your sister a lot of credit for being the so-called agent in your life she did all she did all, a lot of a lot of stuff an agent would do not not that we're you know Putting your agent aside and giving her full credit, but you know she she did a lot. She did, and it sounds like she did the same thing with Stanley as far as um, the show goes, and and getting him into the acting world as well. So, thank you so much again for sharing such a wonderful story, and thanks again for speaking with us. You know, give sharing sharing your story with the fans. We do appreciate it very much.